Kema Katsuragi is famous online for his knack at winning over girls in virtual romance games. But in real life, he's not interested in real girls at all. One day, he accidentally gets roped into a deal with a demon called Elsa der Ruxima, or Elsie for short. Elsie needs his help to catch evil spirits that have sneaked out of hell and taken refuge in girls' hearts. If they don't succeed, they'll both be in big trouble thanks to magical collars around their necks. Their plan, Kema has to make girls fall head over heels for him to lure out these spirits. Otherwise, they're toast. Their first target is Ayumi Takahara, a classmate gearing up for a big track and field race. Kema decides to support her by displaying encouraging banners with Elsie's magic every day on the school field. Even though Ayumi gets annoyed, Kema's convinced she'll warm up to him eventually. Things get complicated when Ayumi sprains her leg before the race, supposedly by accident. Kema suspects it's not as accidental as it seems. He comforts Ayumi, urging her to believe in herself. In a surprising turn of events, they share a kiss when Ayumi saves Kema from falling downstairs, which kicks out the evil spirit hiding inside her. Ayumi ends up winning the race but loses all memory of Kema. However, she blushes when he congratulates her, leaving him baffled. To add to the confusion, Elsie shows up at their school, claiming to be Kema's sister. Kema feels overwhelmed when Elsie tells him there are lots more runaway spirits in the city. They meet Kema's mom, Mari Katsuragi, and Elsie claims to be the illegitimate daughter of Kema's dad, which makes Mari furious and she argues with Kema's dad over the phone about it. Kema doesn't want to accept Elsie as his sister because she doesn't fit his idea of one. Though when he hears Elsie's story about wanting to be like her successful sister, Hakwa, he reluctantly agrees to see her as his sister. While having lunch at a popular sandwich stall, Kema and Elsie spot their next target, Mio Ayama, a rich girl who buys all the sandwiches. Kema thinks she's an easy target because she acts like a tsundere, and he figures a love confession might melt her icy attitude. But things go wrong when Mio's chauffeur attacks Kema instead of her accepting his confession. Following Mio home, Kema and Elsie are shocked to find out she's actually poor, living in a rundown apartment. Kema and Elsie find out from Mio's chauffeur that she's not rich anymore since her dad passed away, and her mom is working hard to make ends meet. The chauffeur storms off when Mio won't admit she's not rich anymore. Mio catches Kema snooping around and rushes back home. Kema sees this as a chance to get closer to her since he's the only one who knows her secret. To get close to Mio, Kema starts biking her to school every day in fancy bike carriages made by Elsie's magic. But after a while, He's tired of it, and Mio almost threatens to whip him, which briefly makes her smile before going back to her cold self and heading home. Kema's next move is taking Mio to a fancy ball. She's mad when he brings her to the mansion gardens instead, where he convinces her to teach him how to dance. They run into some snooty people who look down on Mio, but Kema tells her she doesn't need to pretend to be rich anymore to honor her dad. He encourages her to move on and live her own life. He kisses her, and Elsie captures the spirit inside her. The next day, Mio doesn't remember Kema, but she's changed her attitude and accepted her family's situation. She burns incense for her dad but still acts proud. Kema tries to beat the game Crayon and win over the heroine, Sora Asuka. But the game's full of glitches, like one that keeps replaying the same part over and over. Saving the game just makes it crash, and the company that made it went broke, so there's no fixing it. To get around the glitch and finish the game, Kema makes Elsie help him record the choices he makes. At first, Elsie doesn't get why Kema's so serious about a game, but she starts to admire how much he cares about helping the girls in his games like he does in real life. After lots of tries, Kema finally gets past the glitch, and moves on to the next part. But then, he hits another bug, and has to start over, much to Elsie's horror. An article about Crayon hints that someone actually beat the game, suggesting Kema might have done it. Elsie's all excited about a famous teen idol named Kano Nakogawa, but Kema's not impressed. He thinks real-life idols have too many flaws compared to the heroines in video games. Turns out, Kano's actually in their class and coming back to school. When she meets Kema on the school roof, she's shocked and upset that he doesn't know who she is. She keeps zapping him with a taser. Elsie senses an evil spirit in Kanon, so she becomes Kema's next target. Kanon's determined to make Kema a fan by giving him a private concert, but Kema ignores her. He thinks it's a trick because he believes guys should chase girls, not the other way around. The next day, Kanon tries again with another concert, but Kema ignores her once more. Kanon starts to disappear right in front of them, leaving Kema and Elsie shocked. Kema and Elsie figure out that Kanon's disappearing act is because of the spirit inside her. Kema stops her from tasing him again by praising her singing. He sends Elsie to dig up more info. They find out Kanon used to be in a pop group called Citron before they broke up. She never sings their songs because she feels like nobody noticed her back then. Kanon sends Kema an email, and he cheers her up at her TV shoot. She keeps emailing him whenever she feels down, wanting him to visit. Their bond grows, and Kema agrees to go to Kanon's big Christmas Eve concert at Narusawa Seaside Hall, where she'll sing in front of 10,000 people. 
But on the big day, Kanon's missing again, and Kama knows it's time to finish his plan to win her heart. As Kanon gets ready for her concert, she starts worrying she'll mess up and fade into obscurity again, making her turn invisible. She bolts from the stadium, and the backstage crew goes searching for her. As the concert time approaches, Kama finally finds Kanon at a nearby building. He understands why she's afraid of being forgotten, and tells her not to seek attention as proof of being an idol because her hard work to become one was proof enough. With his support and her fans cheering, Kanon kisses Kama, which makes the evil spirit in her leave and gets captured by Elsie. Kanon goes back to the stadium and gets letters of encouragement from her old bandmates, Yuri and Lime. She goes on stage and gives an amazing performance to the big crowd. As Kama and Elsie leave, he tells her his views on idols haven't changed, but he sees Kanon not as just an idol, but as a shining star. One day, Elsie feels upset because Kama called her cooking useless since it had weird ingredients that were still moving. Her friend Chahiro gives her advice on how to impress Kama, so Elsie decides to make him a strawberry cake. But she messes up the recipe and uses weird ingredients from hell instead of normal ones. This causes a lot of accidents, like setting free a mandragon and blowing up the home economics classroom. At the same time, Kama annoys his English teacher, Mr. Kodama, who doesn't like that Kama plays games in class but still gets top scores. They argue during gym class, and Kodama ends up being chased by the mandragon. The mandragon ends up at Kama's house and drops Elsie's cake there. When Kama gets home, he finds the cake and eats it feeling guilty. But his mom, Mari, thinks he's a thief and hits him on the head with a vase. Kodama comes to Kama's house for a meeting with Mari, but he sees the mandragon get eaten by Elsie's lunch, scaring him off. Elsie gets home and promises to make another cake for Kama. But even though he ate the cake, he tells her he doesn't like sweets, which disappoints her. Kama tells Elsie to hit the school library to catch up on modern human history because her knowledge is way outdated. But instead, she gets hooked on a book about fire trucks. When she asks the librarian, Shiori, for more fire truck books, she senses a spirit inside her. Kama joins Elsie at the library, and they're amazed that Shiori found 458 fire truck books. Kama thinks she used the library index, but Shiori actually just remembers all the books she reads. She's too shy to say anything though. The next day, Shiori rearranges the books and talks about her love for them. Kama knows shy librarian types like her are easy to figure out in games, but real life's trickier. When Shiori gets sad about throwing away some books, Kama helps her reach one she can't get to. She tries to thank him but stumbles over her words. Shiori feels embarrassed about what she said and tries to leave, but when Kama makes a comment about books being useless nowadays, she gets angry and bravely calls him stupid before storming off. Kama tells Elsie later that he's purposely making Shiori mad to get her to speak up. It turns out Shiori has been too shy to talk to people normally, so she's been diving into books to make up for it. The next day, the library committee decides to add a media room, and Shiori wants to give her opinion but can't because she's too shy. Later, she catches Kama writing in one of the books, but he says he's just making corrections. He points out that books can't be fixed instantly, which upsets Shiori. The next day, she catches Kama doing it again, but he's scribbling in his own book. This makes her angry and confused, and she starts talking to herself without realizing it until Kama points it out. The day after, Kama introduces himself to Shiori and talks about the library now that she's speaking normally to him. Now that Shiori's opening up, Kama decides it's time to win her heart after finding a notice about getting rid of library books for the media room. Shiori locks herself in the library and blocks the door to stop the committee from getting rid of books for the media room. While the committee tries to get in, Shiori falls asleep and dreams about how her love for books started. She's woken up by Kama, who sneaked in through a hole in the roof made by Elsie's magic. Kama's there to support Shiori in her protest and stays by her side. The committee cuts the power to the library, surprising Shiori and causing books to fall around them. She hugs Kama and tells him he's the only one who understands her love for books, and why she's protecting them. But Kama calls her out, saying she's not just protecting books, she's protecting herself from the world. He knows she wants to socialize but is afraid of being misunderstood, so she uses books to escape reality. Shiori is troubled by this, but Kama pulls her out of the book rubble and promises to give her courage. He kisses her, and the evil spirit leaves her body so Elsie can catch it. When the committee comes in, Shiori finally speaks up for herself and explains why she's protesting. They agree to have a meeting about it. In the end, Shiori feels like she's forgotten someone who was there during her protest, so she writes a story about it to remember. Because he's been helping Elsie catch spirits, Kama has a bunch of new games he hasn't played yet. Over the weekend, he plans to blast through all of them by playing six games at once in his room. He speeds through them like a pro, making smart choices and enjoying each game, but he gets burnt out later. Elsie's shocked and confused by this and leaves him alone. Kama realizes he can't keep up that pace, so he decides to kick it up a notch and play 24 games at once. After a marathon gaming session, Kama finishes all but one game. He's too tired to go on, but then he starts seeing things. All the game girls he captured are cheering him on. Feeling inspired, he pushes through and finishes the last game. 
Feeling rejuvenated, he imagines himself joining the game world with all the girls, and they sing and dance together. And this is all for this video, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.